inside this box here is the beginnings. I've, and I've had this for a while. Dan will vouch for that because Dan's with us. Dan Culp from Culp. I, I was trying to figure out today what version of FPP I would have installed on that. I'm trying to think of how long ago I sent that to you to figure that out. Wait, wait a second. I Because I haven't opened it. This is the first I just opened it. here for night tonight for this um so i have waited quite a while and um this is dan's uh version of a cape that will allow us to marry the beetle bone to the uh raspberry or, or to the, the beetle bone to the um to the cape that allows us to connect in our p5 or p10 panels and Dan knows a lot more about FPP than I ever will. Um, but this is the cape that we're going to be working with tonight. Um, we're going to marry these two together whenever he says it's okay, because he's going to walk me through the process. And in in this um, process, it's going to be a couple things that we're going to be doing. Uh, so obviously tonight, um, we have a uh, we have a the the goal tonight is to do a P five P ten panel setup with a beagle bone black with uh, Dan's uh, cape that uh, he has available. And um, we, we got a couple P5 panels and I picked them up from uh, your Pixel store. This is uh, if you, and I think mine are just jumped in. Uh, so uh, one, of the, uh, one of the nice things about these panels are these are outdoor rated panels. Um, this is a, uh, we got the uh, we got uh, we ordered a number of them. Uh, Rob didn't know that I was going to do this project, but um, P fives, P tens, P tens used to be uh, uh, thirty two long by uh, what was it sixteen tall? I I, I have no idea what the P fives are. Uh, minor, if you want to jump 32 in, thirty two tall by sixty four wide. So they're they're like super double, <laughs> and every hey, one I'm of sorry. them. Sorry, Clyde, I'm driving right now. What was the question? Do you just want to tell a little bit about your outdoor panels while you got while you got the moment? Yeah, sure. I, the the P5 panels are probably the most popular ones for sure. Um, those are 64 by 32 resolution. Um, and uh, the scan rate is 1, 8, uh, 1 over 8. So, yeah, it, it, it basically gives you a better image. Um, hands down, it the price point for the P5 panels and the P10s have, have gotten so close that I always recommend the P5s over the P10s if you can afford it. Um, otherwise, you can get the P10s. I think the P10 resolution is like 40 by 20. I think it's 40 by 20. If I if I if I remember off the top of my head, 16 but, by 32. Um, what is it? 16 by 32. There you go. 16 by 32. Yeah, sorry. Um, and. Um, and basically the outdoor panels, the cool thing about the outdoor panels is that you don't need anything in front of it. It's they're outdoor rated. Um, they come with a, with a silicone um, seal that you put against your enclosure. Most people are either using mate, building your own wood enclosures um, or they just purchase the enclosures that we offer. The cool thing about that is that, but x Lights actually allows P 2.5s now. So the, a lot of people are actually pushing the envelope and going with the P2.5s. Um, but the P5s, hands down, have been most popular and they look really nice. Very cool. So uh, just one note real quick, though. Um, obviously, you're, you're trying to connect to the Beagle, the, the Beagle with the, with the Octos uh, thing there. Um, that would not support the 2.5, the, the P2.5s. So um, that's just the, the P5s are fine. Uh, the, the P2.5s would not work with that cape so that that's a point of note <laughs> fair fair enough and that's a that's a good that's a good note uh so that that kind of brings me to uh and and you guys if you're watching the screen here i'll bring over this is the cape that we're going to be using from call plates this is dan's octo plus uh it's ridiculously reasonable you if you guys just saw the other page uh, two panels, minor. The two panels; those are selling. They sell in a pair, and you have them on. Uh, and these are the outdoor rated ones. Are fifty-two bucks for a pair. Um, 
you you can get the Octo Plus and and it's twenty eight bucks. That's all I that's all I really need because I I already had the SD card. I wanted to go through the process with the SD card. Um, also, something I learned vicariously today because I didn't realize that there was a huge difference. Is there? Uh, so many of you, if you can, if you can, well, maybe you can't see it. Uh, I have a I have my three uh, D printers off to my left hand side, and. Um, and what I use the 3D printer for is create a uh, a uh, mounting system for this. Now, I didn't go out of my way to print everything here, but I did want to pop up on the screen here a couple things uh, that are that I'm going to that I plan to use. And if you got um, the the uh, P5s or the P10s from Miner, um, you can get the STLs from uh SFL designs. And so I picked up a couple of the uh, specific outdoor rated panels. There's there's different ones between indoor and outdoor rated. So make sure if you go to his site, you'll see them. There's a number of different ones that are available. But one of the things that you'll notice is, is if you do pick, and for for example here, this one says it's an outdoor rated P5 panel T bracket. This, this would... Uh, appear here at the top of the screen right there. That would be like a panel, a T-panel, or maybe it'd be a side T-panel. That's another part, that 3D printed part. These are these have different screw locations, so it's important that you are very cautious whenever you go and you're looking for the STLs, or maybe you are going to print your, uh, you're going to create your own. You certainly can do that. There we go. You should, you should be able to see in the top right of your screen there that I have, uh, I have a P5 panel here and I have four panels in front of you. Um, and then I have this uh, centerpiece as I do on the screen here. The other thing that I noticed is that I needed very specific M4 screws. I got an M4-0.7 X10, and I've ordered these off of Amazon. They're they're just nothing crazy, just black screws. And uh, I have a habit of whenever I get a pack of them, I put them in one of my sorters and I I throw the 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 reorder information there. So I know whenever I need more, I can just order more. Uh, but but for tonight, we're going to do a, a two by two panel. And um, I've, I've kind of preset this up. This was probably the first thing that I had to do. Um, and and mine are these these panels. They run off of five volt. Is that correct? Yes. That's correct. Pretty much okay. all the panels are, are five volt. Uh, because the next thing that we want to do, the next thing that we want to get started with is um, the the first thing that we're going to need is a connection to the beagle bone, and we're going to need to start with uh, getting the SD card set up on the raspberry. Uh, uh, the SD card. So we have a, this is a brand new SD card. So I am going to, uh, this is a 32 megabyte SD card. It's not a fancy one. I will buy it, probably better quality ones here in the future. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start out by putting this SD card in my SD card reader in the computer. You, If you're listening to the audio uh, on the recording, which I don't think I'm sharing with sound, which you probably can't see it. Um, that just connected. And the first thing that we need to do is we need to go and retrieve a copy of the uh, image for the beagle bone. And Dan, there's a there's a is there a new imager that we're going to use to do this for the beagle bone? Well, for the beagle bone, like for everything now, it's just use the Raspberry Pi imager. All right. So the 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 first thing I need to do is we well I need to show them where to find the Raspberry Pi imager. Probably Raspberry Pi dot org, but let me share the screen and I'll uh, number four, number four. There we go. Okay. Yeah, so so just Raspberry Pi dot com. Just do a search real quick. Raspberry Pi dot com came right up. Um, and the software link in the menu there. So here's the software link. And right there. Download for Windows. So this is this is the first step. Now we've already we've downloaded this before. You can see it has a in parentheses downloads imager here. I'm just gonna go ahead and install it now. So here's the installer. I guess we'll I guess we will show this after all. Run Raspberry Pi imager. And uh, that's yeah, that's just, what it's saying. Just hit choose OS and see what comes up. Choose OS. Oh, there you go. There's there we it. go. All right. 
So now we're on to Raspberry Pi OS other. Nope. Keep going down. Other specific purpose OS. Other specific purpose OS. And scroll down a little bit. Look at that. Falcon Pi player. It's built right in. And we don't want 8.0. We want 7.5. But you also want it for the Beagle. But, we, but, but you're right. We want to find the Beagle. That's right one of the number one issues we have is so, to install so you, a pie image on a beagle. Yeah, yeah. So we're to be to be clear, we're we're doing this on a beagle. So make sure you follow that correctly. Um, that'll be the next. That'll be the selection and uh, choose storage. Uh, it has found my SD card. It is mounted already in the SD card reader, and I'll go ahead and click next. Uh, we'll go ahead and are you sure you want to continue? Yes. And we'll let it write. Now, generally, this is like a, a five-minute process, is it not? Somewhere around there, yeah. It, it's downloading it, doing checksums, writing it. It's it's all encompassing. So this is, the, I, I kind of um, left a lot of things out uh, of the intro because for this reason, I knew we were going to have some time that we we're going to talk. Can you talk about the, um, the, the Octoplus and how it works with uh, with the panels. Uh, for example, there are eight outputs on here. And and I know that whenever you order these from uh, mine or any of the other uh, vendors, they're going to send you these data cables. And you can only have so many panels hooked up on these. Now, specifically, these are P P5 panels. Yep. What what are we able to run off of this from a BeagleBone? Now, the Beagles are, are obviously like 12-year-old uh, CPUs. They're not exactly fast. Um, so uh, they were great when we had P P10 panels, um, but now P5s have four times the number of pixels at the, compared to the P10s. Um, so four times the amount of data. So uh, in general, uh, my recommendation is a, to don't go more than about 18 to 20 panels on the Octoplus with the P5s. Um, in general, what works really well would be 16. So it'd be two per, like two for each of those eight outputs to keep it back and try to keep them as balanced as possible. So, so, uh, use all eight. Um, if you're going to have eight panels, use all eight if you can. Uh, but, but going two per output actually works, works fairly well. Uh, I said P5s just have a lot of data. I, there's a lot of pixels. <laughs> That's a lot of data. Uh, and that, but uh, obviously, when you're tr trying to, uh, and you have the same problem with the color lights, like like the cables, you can kind of run into a, a cable length problem because the the cables that they send are probably really short, probably about eighteen inches. Um, so if you're trying to run all the cables from uh, the the octo to like eight runs of cables from the octo, uh, you may need to order longer cables. I think Minor ha has some longer cables on a store. There, there's a few places that do. Um, but if you have to uh, go with like four outputs of of three, so for like if you have twelve panels, maybe doing doing uh, four chains of three, that should be fine um, as well. So if if we had opted instead for a P ten setup, what would uh, that would uh, that would effectively it sounds like it doubles it? Is that correct? No, it, quadru it quadruples it. Quadruples uh it. Yeah, I mean, and actually more than quadruples it, uh, the way it, it ends up working. Uh, I mean, really with P10, you can go up around 80 or 90 panels. Um, I mean, nobody pretty much wires things up that big. Um, with an Octo, usually with something like that, you would use a color light anyway, because uh, you would you would use more of the, like, uh, I, I want to say, like the, the, modular panels where you can have things and, and then kind of connect together because having a, a 90 panel single panel is just massive um you wouldn't be able to move it <laughs> i mean four panels is a desktop full that's for sure yeah. yeah so um what i need to do here is make sure i have you don't no magic smoke no magic smoke that's yeah. what i need to make sure of and make sure you get the pluses and minuses correct. No magic smoke. No whammies. Oh, I have the wrong screwdriver. 
Okay, I guess I wasn't ready for that one. Oh, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So the green is the negative. Green is brown. And see, I knew that I knew that we'd have some time to spare with the it's verifying, so we're we're closing in on the end of it. Okay, these are too long. Well, he's still working and we're still verifying. I can talk a little bit. I mean, the, the, you mentioned that the P5 panels being outdoor panels. Um, so for those of you that aren't familiar with pan panels, I mean, there are indoor panels and there are outdoor panels. The indoor panels obviously do not have the waterproofing and stuff that the outdoor panels do have. Um, however, there are some advantages to the indoor panels, uh, being that they're a lot, they're the indoor panels are significantly easier to configure um, specifically in FPP for it, for the Octos. So you'll see some of the challenge that once it gets all things wired up, hopefully tonight. Um, so they are easier to configure. The indoor panels are usually cheaper as well. Um, so if you do have already a, a waterproof enclosure with like plexiglass front or something like that, um, you don't really need the outdoor panels. Uh, the outdoor panels are also significantly brighter. They, they can almost, in a lot of cases, they can overpower. Like if you try to put uh, P5 panels, because there's so many pixels and the outdoor panels are very bright. Uh, if you put them near other things, they can kind of overpower things sometimes. And, and so you, you end up turning them down to like 20% or 10% and, and it's still very, very bright. So uh, just a little bit of commentary there on, on the various panels. The, th that is absolutely true because um, uh, dealing with, dealing with uh, too many pixels, and it really bright blows out all of the uh it 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 overexposes everything yeah so i have my um once red now looks pink because it was outside in the sun uh but that's okay uh this is a network cable and uh i have them properly hooked up now what's really interesting is this is the first scroller i've seen the, the cape that has a um screen on it and I find that very useful and helpful. So uh, shout out for that, definitely. So uh, the next thing I think we need to do is it says you can now remove the SD card, which I've just done. Uh, I'll, I'll, am I still sharing screen? I sure am. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead and click continue. We should be good to go. Um, the next thing that we need to do is we need to... Um, Focus just on the camera. So I don't know if Rob can pin my camera or not. I'm going to go ahead and. Well, I guess it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I'll just go ahead and take the SD card and I'm going to insert it. Now, do, it, do I remember this right? With the with the beagle bone that you. I oh, know it's got to be that way. Um, with the beagle bone, you have to push and hold down the button underneath of it for the first time for the first boot up. Um, it depends on when the Beagle was manufactured. If it was manufactured in the last four years, then you don't. I mean, it doesn't hurt to hold this S2 button down because um, it, it forces the issue. Um, it's just that you may not. Well, let's it. try it without. We can try it both ways, yeah. right? Yeah. So it it's uh, it's a no loss here. So yeah. uh, I have a network cable plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and power on the unit. Obviously, I've double checked like three times because I don't want to put out the magic blue smoke that this is five volt. Five volt from the power supply going here, and then we're gonna um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, make sure that we have five volt on the one leg, and which is the black side, and the green side is ground. And hopefully, we see a couple of shiny lights here. Now I have to be careful not to yeah don't this, don't. don't set it down on the power supply. Yeah. So Dan, at this point, what what is it doing? It's loading it on there, and we should be able to check and see if we can see the image well, um, yeah it should be booting so the fact that the doesn't say fpp on the oled yet means you may need the s2 button oh, oh there, nope, there, there we is. go there you just go. popped on so it's given us an ip address already so that tells me that uh we're ready to go ahead and Share screen. We'll go back to number four. Uh, you should be able to see. And here is our uh, browser. And we should be able to type uh, fpp.local. And it should come up. 
we should see something. Uh, but we do have an IP address assigned, 192.168.1.135. Um, and, and did I not hit it? FPP.local. Okay. Yeah, it's, well, it's trying HTTPS for some reason rather than HTTP. Do I need to get rid of the S? Yeah, because we don't put certs or anything on there. Well, that would be that would be excellent. So now we have to go through our basic setup for FPP just to get everything kind of crossing our I's and uh, crossing our T's and dotting our I's, I suppose. Um, we'll we'll go ahead and uh, I'm going to enable the password and uh, cancel that. And I'm just going to leave it as default. Um, usually it's the uh, Usually it's the OS set OS password. This is the default. Well, you you enabled the UI password, so now it's gonna everything's gonna fail nope. until you log in. So I'd hit refresh real quick. Oop. And then I got click it. happy. Yeah. <laughs> now Quiet. You're, now you're... Quiet, Rob. And now you got to put admin and, and Falcon there because you enabled the UI password. We were doing something today and I was like, and Clyde, don't click. I was like, okay, we're going to start back over now. <laughs> All right. So we're not going to enable this. We're going to disable the user. This <laughs> the, the UI password can be an annoying sometimes. <laughs> uh, we'll leave this alone. We'll leave well, this like, alone. You need to select default. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't let you pr proceed. Okay. So. And I would say choose a selection on the share statistics. Otherwise, you're going to get an annoying banner on every page. Uh, share statistics. So either yes, enable, disable, but I would. Do the enable. Um, and in general, yeah. I get. Yeah. And we'll That's leave fine. that. In general, I just hit the two buttons at the bottom, the lookup time zone and lookup location, and then I'm usually happy. There, It auto-configured to uh, America and New York and lookup location. That should get your latitude and longitude within some reasonableness. Maybe. We are undetectable here out in the middle of nowhere. Possibly. <laughs> <laughs> For me, it works very well. <laughs> well, um, but that, you can always adjust that later when you figure that out. That's That should be fine. So the next thing that's blaring in my face is base configuration has changed. But, well, now, you, now you have to you have to hit the finish setup button up in the right corner. Okay. So yeah. this is the next step is go to finish setup. Yeah. And then um, we have the big red flag, and we still have the base configuration needs rebooted. The SD card has unused space, uh, and we need to go to storage settings and expand the file system or create a new storage partition. Yep. Is that the next one? That would be the next one, usually, yeah. Because right. that's going to make you reboot anyway, so you might as well do that before you reboot. So so this this only takes like a second. Yep. So, hit, so hit the grow group. file system. Yes. And it's doing it now. And I think it's done because of the close button enabled. Ah, close button is enabled. Yep. We'll go ahead. And now you said reboot. And now we hit reboot. This reboot will take a little bit longer because as part of the process, it was actually growing the file system. Um, so it, it does take a little bit longer than a normal reboot. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, the reboot time is something that we spent a lot of time with FPP8 looking into. Um, 
So with, with FPP eight, the, it should reboot significantly quicker. The uh, information or the, the FPP is booting message will appear on the OLED a lot quicker. Um, it's definitely a little bit better with it, with eight um, going forward. So uh, for those of you that have, I know that some people have complained about the boot speed. Um, some of it we can't do anything about, but we did try to, to optimize it quite a bit for, for FPP eight. Well, it shows that our screen is booting. Um, I really do like the screen. And it probably is going to take a few moments because, like you said, it's uh, building the file structure. Yeah. It's expanding, yeah. expanding, excuse me. Yeah. Is it that like a 64 gig card? A 32. This is a 32. Yeah. So I mean, it's basically taking a, a four gig partition and making it into a 32. So it's, it's got to readjust all the internal structures and stuff and takes a little bit. So the the entire process of just getting started, it I mean we've been we've been going at it for about thirty five minutes just with just general since the beginning since we hit record button actually a little longer but um, overall not too horribly painful and uh, with nice things like especially with the screen that screen just makes all the difference in the world uh, especially for people who uh, need the screens because they need to see their IP address. While we're waiting for it to boot, I can then plug some other products because, like, for those people that oh. use uh, Pies with the uh, color lights, I do have the little Pie OLEDs that are basically just provide the screen. Um, yeah, if you click on that uh, for for Raspberry Pies, so that right there, it's basically just the, the screen and the buttons. So, uh, if you're using a color light or something like that, uh, but still want a screen for your Pie, that's there, relatively inexpensive. Uh, also provides a real-time clock and stuff so no I, I I'm a I'm I'm definitely a fan of 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 that um this is the show player that you created with the uh oh it's done it's loaded this is the show player with the push buttons and uh in the case it comes with the case and yeah so let's go ahead back and do fpp.local again and see if it comes up. So we are up. And we're running. So the next thing that we probably need to do, um, we're probably gonna have to power it down and start it up again. But we we have a we have four of these panels that we're going to try to power up with, right? So you don't want to well, yeah, you you definitely don't want to um plug them in. Um while they're hot, I don't imagine that's probably a good thing. Or is it? Uh, in general, it's a bad idea. That said, mm -hmm. I do it all the time. Um, <laughs> but but it, it's one of those things where I'm going to say, do as I say and not what I do kind of thing. <laughs> so um, I have four panels here. And there's one thing, and if you're looking, I I'm pretty sure that uh, you can see the camera. Is that correct? You can see down here on the off of the camera, right? Yeah. Maybe maybe I should take a second and uh, pin pin the um, stop share because we don't need to see the screen anymore. But um, but here in here on the on the camera, you can see that there's a bunch of arrows, and these arrows designate a couple different things. So first. There's the up uh, the arrows that are pointing up whenever you have it the long way here, and then there's the arrows that you either point right or left. If you turn them the opposite way, you'll see um, these different arrows. What they signify is direction for one. These ones going from here to here. I believe this is your input side, and this is your output side for for your uh, data. Your data, right? And then you have your arrows here that show the direction of the panel and how the panel is being set up. Um, and when we create the model, because we're gonna have to create a model for this in X-Lights, we're going to have to set these panels up in the uh, BeagleBone so that the 
so that the cape uh, so that the the beagle bone knows how the how the model is built and then we can make the two congruent between x lights and and the beagle bone uh, but these arrows help us kind of determine which way they're put together so with that with that big long explanation um i'm going to i'm going to bring this in here and share this with you let me get rid of this thing on the screen here where it's I think some people aren't going to be able to see. Oh, really? It lets me do that. Hold on a second. That moves that over there, and that moves that over there. Okay. I had on on the left side of my screen. You guys, I don't know if you could see it, but um, on the left side. Over here on this side of the screen, I had all the the chat session open and so forth. Um, so as you can see here, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to work from um, from the side where the power comes in and travels this way. Not power, excuse me, data. Data comes in here and it goes this way. And so we're going to need to set up. And I'll do the I'll I'll do the net uh, the the data first. Uh, we're going to need a uh, cable here connecting from here and the arrows going this way and we're making sure that these panels here are congruent going this way as well so i can take this and i can connect it here now i want to make sure that you guys can see that so the arrow so it's starting here and it's traveling over to here and that's carrying the data from this side over to this side, which means that when we go to begin messing around with this, we're going to need a data input of some sort, and that would be this data input. Okay, so that's row number one. We need to do the exact same thing to the other row as well. And when we go to build the model, we'll need to be very specific about which one, which output is connected to the uh, cape, which is hidden underneath here. And uh, Dan's probably going to have to explain which one's which here. Oh, well, they're labeled. They're labeled output one, it looks like. Is that correct? Output one through output four here. Uh, and probably output five. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're only going to use, we are only going to use two of those. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and put this other data cable. I'm Dan, I'm not saying it. I'm not, I'm, 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 I'm pretty much on the money with what I'm explaining. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. I think you got, I mean, output one is down by the the OLED though. So I think you were back there. It's hard to see it a little. Right, right. <laughs> well, I, I wanted to make sure, I wanted yeah. to make sure that, again, this is, I wanted to be specific about the, again, this is about um, P10 panels, P5 yep. panels for dummies. I, I, I want everybody to see that I have, I have them put together in the final, quote unquote, the final orientation. I have them connected network wise where I'm following the flow of data. And then I'm also keeping them congruent with these other arrows. They're pointing the same way. Now, does it matter? Probably not um, because you can change these. It, 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 this doesn't have to be. But just it's, it's interesting um, because uh, ideally you would make all the arrows point the same way like you have. Um mm -hmm. Because I've actually had pick, uh, panels um, where each pixel, as you know, each pixel has an, an R, a G, and a B LED in them. Um, so I've actually had panels where, because of the way the orientation of those three lights inside the LED were, uh, when I had the panels upside down, you could actually tell uh, when you looked at it, when you had a picture on it, that that was face different because the, the, the way the like the blue came out of the lead wasn't as diffused as uh, just because of the way that it was rotated funny. So having them all go the same direction kind of makes sure that, that what you're going to see is going to be very consistent. And, and not only that, it's, 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 it's important that you are consistent, a hundred percent consistent, because when you go to flip this around, this is the backside and we're going to enter the information from the front side, is that correct? Uh, FPP allows you to do it either way. So okay, 
Yeah. So, <laughs> so there, there's finagling, there's finagling involved whenever you're dealing with these. So it, sometimes if you don't get it right the first time, like that's why I'm not worried about tonight me screwing up because I'd rather make the mistakes and do the dumb things because if at least if I do the dumb things and you guys do the same thing, then you know how to recover. So um, that pretty much takes care of the main things. We need to power down the uh, beagle bone because I need to connect the power cables and the power cables are here. So this is what the power cables look like. Uh, and again, these are from Miner. Miner sent these, these are included. The the ribbon cables come from Miner as well. So whenever you buy a P5, P10 setup, they'll send you the proper network cables. You may need longer ones. Now I have these really short ones here. They're, they're gonna have to go all the way over here to the, to the beagle bone. That's not, I don't have much room I didn't, I didn't make an extensive long cable here, but I made it so that I'm only going to have the two of these hooked up. And I think I've got you in the shot here. Let me move this over a little bit more. Uh, I'll be able to put one in one and one in the second one. So the first output is here, right here at the at uh, on your top left. I think that is your top left. And then this is number two. We'll go ahead and plug those in when we get to that point. But for now, I'm just going to power down. And this is the the old the old way FPP used to be. Let's say what dot uh, version one point seven. Yeah, I had so many corrupted cards that would make me frustrated beyond belief. So the next thing I need to do now is I need to. Find my so just as a, a plug for Miner here, I mean he he has thirty inch, twenty seven inch, and fifteen inch ribbon cables. Um, on his store. He's also got wire by the foot. So if you have custom links that you want, um, I, I know I'm not sure if he's still on the, on the call or not, but I, I'm giving him a, pl a plug right now. Um, <laughs> so, so you, you're not stuck with those tiny little cables. Uh, when you order your panels, think about that as well. So in other words, whenever you're building, consider whenever you're building, uh, yeah. what you're going to need when the final build is all assembled. So, and, and that's a, that's, quite a good point. So obviously the goal here is to hook up the five volt positive with the red cable and the ground or the negative. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I, the, this is also, uh, I don't know if where you got those 3D print, print things, but I think he has also got mounts for mounting pies mm -hmm. and beagles and stuff to the back of the panels. Um, yeah. So like if the beagle and the octo was mounted right there where your hands are, um, the short the short cables would be perfectly fine. Um, so you have to think also, okay, where am I gonna put my pie or beagle um, and, and measure the length of your cables that you need for that as well. So I will say that these uh, connections are keyed and they have a clip on them. So don't just try to pull these off of the board. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't try to pull these off of the board and they only go on one way. And again, you can you can see that uh, b uh, we're, we're kind of limited. I, I should have made these cables a little bit longer, but I didn't. So life goes on, you make mistakes and then you move on. Um, but again, all we're doing is we're connecting up. Those are clicking right in place. And, and then also visually, you can double check and make sure that these clips are going on correctly. And the way to do that is, is right on the board itself there is, and I don't know if the camera's fixing it up. Um, let's see if I can get a better shot of this. So here's the power. And you can see where the word ground is at the top here and VCC, that uh, that's th that looks like the voltage uh, positive. So the red's going to the VCC and the black is going to the ground. And uh, we should be we should be pretty much set up. So um, the hard part is flipping this upside down so that you guys can see it. And at the same time, me making sure that everything's hooked up the way that it needs to be so that we can apply these. Um, so I'm going to put our bottom row, which now it appears that with this configuration, the arrows are pointing down. 
my first panel is the bottom left one here because it's facing me. It's not facing you. It's the bottom left. This is this one here that I'm pointing at right here. This is the bottom left. And uh, maybe I can bring the camera up just a little bit. There we go. And this one here is the, the top left right here. There we go. Top left. Uh, there we go. Yeah. So this is the top left. This is the bottom left. And you can see our arrows are uh, configured as such. I'll go ahead and plug. I'm going to lay this down and plug them in because the beagle is going to get kind of tossed around a little bit if I hold it up. And there's only one way to put these in here. So uh, the beagle bone is, the, the, the cape is keyed to fit exactly with these ribbon cables. So you see the key right there. It only goes in the one way. You can't put it in the other way because the rest of them, they don't have the key on the opposite side of the uh, of the connector on the, uh, on the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little bit of protection just, just for my peace of mind. I'm going to put this here so that we don't have any metal to metal contact. And let's go ahead and fire up we'll go ahead and fire it up as I plug this in. So cross your fingers and your toes and hopefully we've got uh we've got it back up and running in a second and then we can go into the configuration that would be the next step. And we're just waiting for uh, the screen to pop on on the Beagle. So we've already grown our file size too, so it should boot up a little bit faster this time. Right, Dan? Yep, should. Some of the comments in chat, Ben Smith said, uh, smoked an $80,000 radio once. That sucks. Oh, there is uh, our Screen sync booting. We'll give that a second. So, Mr. Merlin Q. Potter said uh, the panels are hot swappable. It's on the data sheet, and the big dogs who do video walls and billboards do it all the time. So, apparently, that might be the case. You could uh, unscrew if you have a bad panel, you could unscrew this, just disconnect it, leave the rest of it running, plug this in, screw this in, and uh, your panel's back up and running. Um, he's saying that because the, the bigger professional boards use magnets and they yeah. suction cup to the front, pull it out, oh, and put the straight in. True, true. That's yeah, right, that's because true. the mounts have magnets so that they, they can easily and quickly um, assemble them. Whereas yeah, ours are the question is, though, does, does the color light card have special circuitry to, to protect it? To protect itself. That's not part of the Octo. I don't know. I really don't know, which is why the idea. Kind of, I mean, that said, like I said, I I swap them all the time. I mean, when I'm testing things, I'll actually have just one panel, and I will actually just go from port to port to port to port, unplug, plug, plug, like while it's running in test mode, just to see what's going on. So, all right. So it looks like we're into the pie. Excuse me, we're into the beagle. Why do I keep saying pie? Because it's FPP. Um, yep. Uh. So now we need to go in, and if I remember, we need to go to our input-output setup. Is that yep. the next yep. location? So Channel that output. would tell me outputs. And now we're going to come down here underneath where it says it says enable Octo Plus, which so in other words, you have a you have a you have circuitry on there, and you have a command to tell it, hey, I've got an Octo that I'm yep. wearing, right? Yep. So it knows this ahead of time. And so now what we need to do is we need to add um, our layout for our, our configuration. So what we want to do is we want to start here where it says panel layout. And we have uh, one wide by one high. And we actually are going to change that. We have one two wide by two high. So we'll say two for one width and two for height. 
And now, so a single panel size width and height, it says 32 by 16, and that is actually a P10. We're not using 32 by 16, we're using 64 by 32. And then we have a couple other options here. It says 1 16th scan and it says 1 8th scan. So, Dan, can you kind of explain that? Yeah, the, I mentioned the indoor panels and outdoor panels ahead of, uh, previously. Uh, almost all indoor P5s will be 1 16 scan and almost all outdoors will be 1 8 scan. Um, I, I want to say almost because I pretty much. That's just the way they, they fall in. Uh, for, what that basically means is that any like fraction of a second, um, uh, one eighth of the rows uh, in your panel are going to be lit. So with thirty two um, with thirty two rows, uh, with one sixteen scan, uh, only two rows are going to be lit. Whereas with the one eighth scan four rows will be lit at any given time. I mean, it's obviously happening so fast that you don't like, you don't see it going from row to row to row to row. Um, but if you look at any, like a very specific point in time, uh, that's basically what's happening. And, that, and that's why the outdoor panels are so bright compared to the indoor panels is because there there's four rows lit at any given time, as opposed to, to two, it, it's twice the amount of stuff coming out. So. All right. Um, so the next thing is, uh, that FPP is asking us on the for the for the hat, it's saying uh, model start corner. Um, I've already signified that, and you guys can't. I'm I'm sorry, you can't see this, but uh, this is if uh, you're looking at my camera, the bottom left is going to be right here is going to be the front side bottom. It's going to be the first output. That's where we have the first ribbon cable coming out of. So. Um, We'll change this to bottom left. And uh, we don't have to mess with anything gamma related yet, do we? No, or brightness or anything, yeah. So we can leave that all uh, alone. Pantel, panel interleave. Okay, Th this is where things get really complicated with the outdoor panels. Um, as I mentioned, there's four rows that get output at any given in time, but there's only data connectors for two rows at a time. Um, so it has to interleave the the four rows of data over two rows of, of signals um and there's all kinds of different ways of doing that um i unfortunately minor i don't know if he's still on here uh, if minor could tell me which it, his panels are uh each outdoor panel like i have outdoor panels from different vendors and they're all different um i would start by either selecting eight pixels or 64 pixels um actually i'd probably start with 64 um minor just put in chat he said it's not recommended to hot swap unless you know what you're doing by the way uh <laughs> and 64, 64 is what okay. he suggests yep yeah so, so I, that that's the standards that i've seen are, are eight and 64 so they're, they're the good good starting points to to as a starting point and if he says 64 then then go with it <laughs> Okay, so next would be an a. Uh, we have the color depth. Do we have to do anything with color depth? Um, with only a two by two two panel, it's not a lot of pixels. Um, so I would recommend jumping that up to twelve. Um, uh, what that allows it to do is is for the two point two gamma to actually uh, it gives you more bits to uh to to work with. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know anything about gamma, it creates a curve. So you're starting off with 8-bit data because each channel, like red, you have 0 to 255 for your red channel. Um, if with a gamma of 2.2, you're really dropping the number of values down to uh, about, I think, 180, if I remember right. Um, whereas going with 12-bit color, 12-bit color allows you to to keep the the 255 values. Um, just just gives you more accurate output. Um, but if that's more data that's going to go out to the panels. So if you have bigger, like if you're running the full like 16 or 20 panels, you're not going to be able to do that with 12 bit. You'll have to keep it eight, but so. All right. Small. So now we have a start channel over here. We're going to leave this at one. We're creating a brand new layout just for this model and this prop uh, and this Beagle bone uh, so that we can simplify it. 
um, channel count. It's saying that we're going to use roughly 24,576 channels for four panels of P5, and that's 8,192 pixels. So uh, for many people out there, if you uh, where your shows pixel count on your on your website front page, um, like I never counted my P5s or P while well, my P10s. Mm -hmm. I just counted what a pixel was. I didn't count what the what the panels were, uh, but that would be your pixel count right there. Uh, default panel color order RGB uh, minor. It, are these are RGB or are they a different color order? Are you aware of? Or it might be one of those. It might be one of those. Uh, well, well, he says he says RGB, but uh, it, it it certainly could be uh, something different in other cases um so make sure make sure you look it up on the website um output by row we have two rows so we're gonna need to no, do no this is this is a different setting um, this is a different setting okay okay uh, a lot of the specifically during covid um there's a lot of panel makers that went with very very cheap components because that's what was available i mean give them credit for even finding components um and what happened is that they can't the components couldn't refresh as fast enough uh, when we when we we're switching from row to row to row. Um, so there's a couple of settings here that were specifically to slow things down and change the order of how we output data to deal with the crappy components that were uh, common during the COVID problems. Um, if you don't like. A lot of those cheaper panels during that time, uh, if you use the default settings, you would get ghosting. Uh, so what would appear on one line would kind of ghost slightly onto other lines and stuff like that. So we had to do a lot of little settings here just to to work around some of the... the uh, again, you, you can't really fault the vendors because they were actually able to produce for, like fine components that yeah. and press panels, um, but they weren't the same quality uh, of what you would probably be getting from from minor or or from our vendors today. Um, that, it is what it, it it was a tough time. <laughs> it really was a tough time. <laughs> we, well, and and you know the funny thing is is that it's been like three years since then, but we yeah. felt the after effects for two years, yeah. and and so it, it it's almost like we're back to normal now, sort of, but 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 not. Yeah, because there <laughs> there's still things that are that are happening. We, we don't need an advanced layout for a layout such as this, do we? No, no. What what What's the instance where you consider using the advanced layout, Dan? Uh, the advanced layout, um, I honestly don't know a whole lot about this. It's something that Chris has done. Um, it does allow like gaps. So uh, if you have part of your panel uh, and then there's like a pole or something uh, kind of in the middle and you have some more panels to the right, it allows you to have uh, gaps in things. Um, and kind of actually have it modeled that way. Uh, it also allows weird rotations where you can have, um, uh, like, uh, if you, you could actually have it, like, in your case, five panels, where, where you have, like, two by two and then one kind of going up the side to... to oh. Like oh, a, so if we were if we were doing something kind of goofy like turning this one this way and adding yeah. it in, adding it into you know another another configuration like maybe this is a sign and this is the post. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so it allows all kinds of weird layouts and stuff. Um, I I don't recommend like you really need to get uh, into panels to get that configured correctly for for anybody that's starting out or, or using a regular rectangular or like square or rectangular setup. Um, you really shouldn't need it. <laughs> it, it gotcha. Can be very complex. So um, then the last. Complex. So yeah. then the last thing that we need to configure is how we have our panels physically set up, and from the front view, uh, we have we have O dash one and O dash one and O dash one and O dash one, and what I believe, if I remember correctly, this is the output. Correct. Yep. And if we're looking at the front view of the panel, um, the bottom left was our first output with panel one being on the very left. Uh, and then panel two output one would be right here. So this would be this would be panel one because we've gone from the first output. I'm, I'm hoping that you guys can see this in the camera. Um, this was output one. This is panel one. This is panel. This is output one panel number two. 
So this bottom row is the front side, which unfortunately I won't be able to, I'm, we'll have to finagle to get to show you. So then the second row here is our output number one. We need to change this to output number two because that's this output right here. Uh, again, not sure if you can see everything there. This is output number two from the from the BeagleBone Cape over to here, running from here, leaping over to number two. So we need to change this to output number two, panel number two. Now, the last thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that if we're looking at it, this is the top, this is the bottom, this is the top. We need to make sure that our arrows up and down are facing the correct way. And um, they match what is here on the screen, as you see. Uh, it looks like the pan the arrows, while I had them upside down, they actually turn down. So all of my arrows are facing in the downward direction. And I believe that all I should have to do is just click on them to change their direction. Man, that's way easier than I ever remember it used to be. Um, okay, so we have a we have another um option here, a, a, a dropdown that I'm not familiar with. Can you explain the C dash def drop downs that are on the panels? Can you just click on it to see what the options are? Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I know what this is. Um, this was uh, like a lot of people, like when you buy your panels, they would forget to buy some extra panels. Uh, these lights do burn out some occasionally or they die or, or whatever. And so they would go off to a vendor ex again during COVID and buy whatever they could get in stock someplace. And it would come in and it would be in a different color order. So like their main panels are RGB, but then the new one came in as GRB or whatever. Um, what this allowed you to do is have a specific color order just for that panel. So when you replace, uh, you're not going to get the colors to match exactly, but at least the color order is correct. Um, so so, so yeah. while the blue might not match the blue on the other panels with the new panel or the, the pink may not look exactly the same across all the panels, that one, that one that you replaced it with, right. you're still able to zero in specifically. Yeah. Um, uh, that you're still able to zero in specifically and be yeah. able to still utilize your original panel, even though you have a bad panel and you can still continue the season without having to destroy the whole thing and reorder all new pieces. Right. Uh, so that's definitely helpful. It looks like there's no more options. I really don't see anything else that we have to change. No. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead, go up here and uh, save. Yep. Because I don't want to go through all that again. <laughs> so just for just so everybody's aware, this is probably the best point in the whole video. Whenever you're watching this again, uh, whenever you whenever you literally, I went through, I walked through every one of these little drop boxes, and I did that because eventually I'm going to go back and I'm going to utilize the information again. And so, uh, if you have questions specifically uh, about anything that we've gone through, we've covered so far. Uh, please put them in the comments now. Uh, or if you're watching at home, if you're watching on YouTube, go ahead and put them in the comments section. Uh, even though I may not have the answer um, on exactly what the situation is that you're seeing, uh, we can revisit this or we can try to revisit it. It's really hard to, to always just create a new video for something. But I wanted to make sure this one as was complete as possible. Uh, again, uh, I haven't done this and I, I really haven't set up panels with the, on my own for at least four or five years. So uh, we should be good to switch over to x lights now to create a model. Is well, that well not actually, now while you're here, uh, hit restart FPPD. Oh. Because there's, there's a couple of things here that, that's really useful. Um, OK. So, so you saved it. Now you restarted it. So, so now FPP should be up and running. Now if you scroll up to the top, you see that test pattern button? Yeah. Like, oh, click wow. on it. Well, and, it's it's glowing underneath me. That's for sure. Uh, unfortunately, you can't see your panels. Um, but I, I should but be I displaying can... a really useful pattern. Oh my goodness! Um, and that will tell you that you got everything wired correctly. Like if you see that pattern, so and the number and the numbers are matching. Like you'll see two dash. You see the two and the one. That's uh, out. I see two one, and I see one one. Yep. And I see one two, and I see two two. So, so it's it's panel 
one output to whatever. Um, but it's also all the lines are correct, like the border is correct, the diagonal lines are correct. That means the 64 interleave that that miner suggested was exactly right. The, the pattern is correct. Like so it, it, what does this what does this one two one one two one two two stand for? Uh, well, I think you might be looking at it upside down because it's one. Um, it, it should be the output number and the panel number. Um, okay. Yep. Yeah. So, so if you had eight panels in a chain, you would see one, 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 two, one, three, one, four, one, five, all the way up type thing. So, it's, it's basically just helps you. That test pattern is specifically there to help you make sure that you wired the panels correctly and you configured them right in FPP. So I, I now th this is this is um the I, I, unfortunately I can't just grab the camera and rip it down, um, yeah. but I can tell you if you're looking looking at the screen sharing right now, um, as opposed to the camera, which um, which on the recording I'm not sure where the camera is going to be, uh, but I see front view zero two should be up here and it should be panel number one. And it says two, two, as opposed to, so. Do you yeah, yeah, but you're, you're, look, are you, you're looking at it. So this is the, this is my output. Number one is on the bottom left. Yeah. Panel one. So that would be this one here, panel one. This is to the first output, but it's saying it's output two dash one. Interesting. So wait, that's so. This is uh, I, again um, longer cable certainly would help, but this is output one. It's going down to the bottom here. So this one here should be my uh, should be according to the screen. This should be output one, panel one. That's the first one. That's this one here that we plugged into, and we're going from this input here. Right across to this output, which is one two, which is one two. So, so the bottom two should be panel dash one, panel dash two. Right, but you set that down. So, so that's, the one, that's the panels closest to you. The panels now. closest to me are, and now this is panel number one, which you just saw the the input. Yeah, it looks like it the, says look, two one, two looks dash like the one, one one and the one two. They're, they're both on the output one. Interesting. Okay, so it looks like they might be backwards. Because this is this is definitely output two, panel number one. Yeah. Output two, panel number two. Might have something to do with the. So are my arrows? arrows are are my arrows? So that would be the next question. So let's do a little uh, bit of diagnostic here. So from the up position, this is a down arrow. This is a down arrow. This one up here is a down arrow. And this one here is a down arrow. So they're all facing down. All of them are. We have front, his front view. And your face, you're sitting there. Left. Huh, they look correct to me. I don't think the start channel matters. The start channel doesn't matter for this. I'm reading the comments as. <laughs> no, I he see. I the, see that he has the start corner should be top left. Is that correct? Uh, it doesn't matter. That's just has to match whatever you put in X lights. So in, so the, in, X, in X lights, if you set it's a, obviously a horizontal matrix. If you set it to top left, you got to match here. Otherwise, everything's gonna be upside down. Right, and 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 it is yeah. So, but I, that just that's just crazy. So the idea would be that we need to configure this so that this output is correct. Um, as I as you've seen the comment I, in general, I always ever seen people configure panels with the arrows up so we may have a bug there um i'm not sure why though again this this isn't my 
this is Chris's stuff. I'm okay, not... so turn them all to up, Clyde, and then turn the board upside down. Turn the actual panels, rotate them 180 degrees, and see if that fixes it. Correct? Now you're going to rotate the entire matrix 180 degrees. Well, right? well just yeah, hit save and restart and the, do the pattern again. And where's, just see if it change anything. Where's, where's that? Uh, restart. Let's we'll stop the pattern. Okay. Restart so, FPPD. Yeah. And then go ahead and test pattern it. Okay. I have completely flipped them and that didn't change anything. No, 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 but you're not holding it. Uh, oh, they didn't rotate? They did not rotate. That's interesting. So I don't know. It's possible hmm. that the test pattern doesn't honor the rotations. Which then makes... Does that make sense now? It might. I don't know. Uh, again, the, the test pattern stuff was added later. So I, again, I don't know. I, so the, fact, the fact that it actually looks correct as far as the lines, it, it was mostly to to deal with the inner leaves. Because um, as, as I mentioned, there's different... If you look at the inner leaf drop down, there are so many inner leaves there that it was hard to set up. Um, yeah, I don't... I don't think the test pattern is going to do anything. So it, there, there's the possibility that the test pattern could be buggy. Yeah, it could be buggy. I don't know on that. That's interesting. So what we'll, uh, I'm, we'll, gonna, I'm adding that to my list of things to test tomorrow. <laughs> so what we'll do is we'll we'll put it back to the original configuration. And I'll restart it. And so it did output. So we know that it's going to work, right? So that that's one thing that we did learn is that the the panels are going to work. Um, what I'll do next is um, uh, let's get into X lights, right? I, I'm going to have to jump off probably about ten minutes, but no problem. We'll yeah. we'll go ahead and do a discover. Hopefully, it finds our instance of FPP, which it certainly did. It's the only one that I have on here. Um, do we need to go in? Look at it. Even even set it up as FPP LED panels. Uh, there's nothing more that really needs to happen here other than we need to create a model. So specifically, this is a matrix panel. And we said this was... Um, 128 wide. 120, 128, it was 128 wide, right? Yep. And 64 tall. And a, and a cool thing is, is if you hover over the the strings and the strands, it tells you about the panels now. That was something I know that was out of the while ago in X lights, but anybody that's watching, just in case you get confused on what's your horizontal, what's your vertical. Let's go look at our wiring view just real quick. <laughs> Not that you can see it. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that looks correct. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> how about we do? How about we do node layout? That's what I meant to click on. Okay, so it's starting them. I was waiting for Morpheus to come out of the matrix. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so it's starting them. This is this is set up as a horizontal matrix. What do we need? Something specific? Well, well, you in FPP said it was a bottom left starting point. Mm -hmm. So we need you. So you need to change that. So that. Oh, we'll close out of that. Oh, bottom left. Bottom left. And that should do it. And well, you're supposed to assign it to the controller. That just, yeah, that's right. Visualize it. You can. <laughs> now we need to do. We should be able to click upload, and that should work, right? Or uh, you really don't. Yeah, it should, but you don't even need to because it's channel one, so it's already set. So. <laughs> So if we were to uh, just open up a test sequence, or uh, not really a test sequence, but just start X lights, put a timing mark down, and I just put the bars effect on it. And if we output it, hopefully, hopefully it does something. There it is. 
It and must then, have did something because you're. Uh, oh, there it comes. I say because your webcam completely washed. <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's going to be very hard to see because, as, as I mentioned, um, at any given time, only four rows are lit up, and that really can kind of mess funky with the the scan rates of our cameras. So you, we may not be able to see it. That so be fun. <laughs> are it you was, able it to was see cool it? there at the beginning because you could actually see the four lines at a time on it. Yeah. All right. Um, can you can you guys see the bars working there? They they are working correct. Uh, and if we go and do the left, they are working correct. As a like looking at this and looking at the screen, they are working correctly. That's awesome. But you can see it scanning, and this is through DDP. Yeah. Like that's incredible. That's rather incredible. I mean, everybody's favorite. You got to put the pinwheel on it, right? There's the pinwheel. You know everybody wants to play with the pinwheel. Actually, it's not tested until you put the text effect on it. And type oh, text. yeah, yeah. Text is always... It's, it's almost like flicking a strap when you put a load on just to see if everything's secure and you know it's going to stay now. Look at that. Oh, Only... Word pressy. I see. Looks correct to me. Yeah, it looks it yep. looks correct. Uh, you know what? You guys can't see it, but here I'll flip it. I'll flip it vertically, right? And then you can you, you can you can see uh, flip vertically. Bam. No, rotate one hundred and eighty degrees. That's what we need. There you go. You should be able to read it. Can you read it? Yep. <laughs> it says, "Clyde, time to wrap this up." Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> but it works. Well, guys, that is that is FPP and P10, P5 panels for dummies. So uh, the biggest dummy in the room is me because I haven't done this in forever. And uh, the, the smartest man in the room, Dan, who's about to leave us, unfortunately, uh, I understand you have to go. Thank you very, very much for being here and bringing uh, helping to bring this together. Uh, it was a lot of fun doing this. I, I, I look forward to kind of doing the, the bigger part of the project, which is uh, coming up later. So, uh, but if you guys have any questions, put them in the chat below. Uh, it's, if you're... it's interesting that, that miners already popping up saying it's easier than the color light, which, which it is. <laughs> uh, huge thank you, Dan. Thank you very much. It really, yeah. it really means a lot to me that you that you came in here and that you kind of held my hand and made sure I didn't fall flat on my face. So thank you very much. Yeah, um, I have a few more minutes. So if anybody has any questions, I mean, definitely ask now because I'm here well, for a couple minutes. 